Hello and welcome to the meat shop. Today in the meat shop we're making formed ham. It's a super easy thing to make. You don't need a lot of equipment. I got more out on the table than you need if you want to make a formed ham. Um, and they're delicious. They're 10 times better than the commercially made ones you get out of the deli at the supermarkets. And you're going to save a whole bunch of money if you're doing them at home. Form ham is, like I said, easy. It's basically chunks of pork pressed in a container and seasoned and cured, then fully cooked. That's all it is. You don't need the grinder. I'm going to use a grinder to show you kind of two different variations of how to make formed ham today. Um, so the biggest part about making formed ham is you kind of want to have a little nicer meat selection if you're not going to be using a grinder. Um, so today I kind of got a, a chunk of a pork loin and some uh, pork chopsticks, just kind of nice lean meat that's fairly connective tissue free. If it's got a bunch of connective tissue, you'll have little bits of tendon and chewy things in your ham. You want a ham to be nice and tender. Um, the other thing you'll need is something to form the ham in. So I got uh, this guy here off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. I'll sh you'll see how it works later, but essentially you fill this vessel up. This spring-loaded little guy goes on top of the ham. And then this guy pushes the ham down and it's got a little hole in it you can poke the thermometer into. Alternatively though, you can just use a set of pans that are the same size. You're going to fill this bottom pan up, push this one down on top and put a weight on it. I picked, like you can make formed ham for pork loin scraps or pork loins on sale or dirt cheap sometimes. I picked these up for a toonie at a second hand store. I guess some of you are like, what's a toonie? It's a $2 coin in Canada. <laughs> so two bucks, two bucks and a pork loin and we can make some formed ham, okay? Um, so all we'll do is we'll get this vessel on my scale, weigh it out, then I know how much spices to put in. So we'll get it teared here, get it filled with uh, our pork. This one's going to be just the straight pork chunks with no ground added, the most simplest version at home. Okay, so you also want to fill it up. This little spring, as you can see, is going to sit, you know, that far down. So you want the ham to maybe be half the distance of the spring, if that makes sense. So I want to fill this vessel up to about here. The meat selection for this is fairly lean stuff. Not much connective tissue. It's actually, this, these are just some muscles off of the hip. We pulled off a pig the other day. And just some, some pork chops with a little bit of marbling. Marbling is good to add uh, juiciness to this because otherwise it's fairly lean when you're using just straight pork chops. So if you can find something with marbling, that'll add flavor. And I'm gonna cube these up as I put them into this container. And the key to making a good form ham is you kind of want different shapes and sizes. If you have all just really large pieces, you'll have big air pockets in your formed ham or you'll have some air pockets in your formed ham. And ideally, you want it to be a uniform texture. There's no spaces between your chunks. So what you do while you're cutting it up is you kind of get different shapes and sizes. You'll cut up a bunch of cubes that are decently large, and then I'll cut up some cubes that are smaller to fill the spaces in between. Okay, so as you can see, I have cubes of different sizes to make this work. The one in this hand here, larger cubes, the one in this hand, a little bit smaller cubes. And I'm not necessarily worried about mixing them up yet. I'm just getting my container full here and then get a weight and I'll know what spices to mix up. Okay, I got the vessel just about full and it weighs almost exactly a kilogram, uh, 1,043 grams. So I'm just gonna say it's a kilogram, 43 grams isn't gonna make a big difference on a product like this. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll measure out the spices for a formed ham. For, and I'm just gonna do a simplest version of formed hams. You can dress them up uh, from here, but this is like the base version of ham seasoning. So what is that recipe you're asking? We use salt at 15 grams per kilogram, brown sugar, 10 grams per kilogram, cure, three grams per kilogram, and sodium erythrobate, which is a cure accelerator, which means I could go straight to cooking this relatively quickly, at half a gram to, per kilogram. Then optionally after that, you can add binder. It'll help those pieces of ham cube or pork cubes stick together. 
Um, you could add California ham spice, a little bit of liquid smoke if you're looking for a little smoky flavor, and then whatever type of seasonings you want afterwards. You could put a little paprika in, you could put a little garlic if you want a ham garlic, parsley, lemon, and honey if you want a honey ham. But the essentials are salt, 15 grams per kilogram, brown sugar, 10 grams per kilogram, cure, three grams per kilogram, and sodium erythrobate, or a cure accelerator like ascorbic acid at half a gram per kilogram, okay? So that's what I'm just gonna do with these two today. Salt, brown sugar, cure, cure accelerator. And I have one kilogram, so I'll weigh out those spices. Here, I got them with me, a little salt, brown sugar, cure, cure accelerator. My nice vessels from upstairs, okay? So it's one kilogram, so I'll need 15 grams of salt. Whoops, turned my scale off, I meant to hit tear. There's our 15 grams of salt onto our pork cubes. We're gonna need 10 grams of brown sugar. Okay, 10 grams of brown sugar. Pick that up a little bit, got a little dry. Three grams of cure. And half a gram of sodium erythrobate. So that's hard to measure on the scale, so you put a little bit in. If it doesn't change it, there we go. So what I did there is my, this little container weighed 35 grams. I poured just a little bit in. Uh, it didn't quite say 36 yet, so it's probably pretty close to half a gram if you don't have a scale that's that accurate. Um, you could also add just a little bit of water if you want to. Um, in sausages, we add 10 grams per kilogram. That might be a bit much for this. You also don't need to add water because that salt is gonna kind of pull moisture out of the ham cubes and then it'll just redistribute the spices and cure through everything. So I'm just gonna skip adding water. Here's our ham. Give it a really good mix. You want all that uh, seasoning and cure distributed over these ham cubes um, as thoroughly as possible. They're gonna get a little bit sticky, but the idea of that ham mold, that ham press, is gonna um, extract protein and get them to stick together. In the suggested um, ingredients, I said binder. Binder would just help ensure that this sticks together a little bit more. What you're doing with a binder, I have an episode on what are binders, um, but basically binder is adding an additional protein. When we cut the face of a piece of meat, there's little muscle fibers that are trying to reach out and reconnect to other pieces of meat. And when they do, it's called protein extraction. That's what's gonna hold these ham cubes together is protein extraction. And when you add it in the form of soy protein, whey protein, dehydrated milk, deheated mustard, those are all binders. You're in, in a powder form, you're helping those little tentacles connect to one another a little more. All right, this is nice and mixed up. Everything is well distributed. So I'm gonna transfer it into this case and put that spring on the top. So we got little ham cubes mixed around with big ham cubes. Get it all in there. Kind of pack it in as you go. Kind of push the little air pockets between the cubes out. And this little guy on Amazon, I'll put in the link below. But uh, I'm sure when I bought this for Marinsky March two years ago, it was under $20. So $20 brand new. All right, now the spring goes on top of the ham. And this little guy, you push down and lock him in. All right, so that ham's, or that spring's gonna be putting pressure on the ham. So it's all in there, ready to go, and we would just dunk it into the water when we're ready to cook. I'm gonna let this cure overnight because some of those ham cubes are around an inch. Now we'll do it with these, these pans, same idea, except I'm going to do a little bit of ground with it. That way I can bring the fat content up a little bit. It'll be a little bit juicier, so I'm gonna go half ground, half cubes. So I got a, for this one, I got a chunk of pork loin and a pork tenderloin I had kicking around. You get pork tenderloins on sale sometimes and they'll make perfect molded ham because they are so tender. You don't get any chunky bits with this guy. So I know these are both super tender, so I'm gonna make the ham chunks quite a bit bigger in this one because I'm gonna put ground pork around it. So I'm not so worried about uh, air pockets or spaces between the, the two cuts. You don't need a grinder for this either, by the way. You could just pick up some ground pork from the store or uncured pork sausage and just add a little cure to it. To... So it's gonna be about a two kilogram deal. 
Okay, and for uh, pork that we're gonna grind up to this, we have kind of about a 60-40, 70-30 kind of type mix. 70% lean, 30% fat, roughly. I'm gonna send it through a coarse plate and then a fine plate. So we're gonna run this through the grinder. Oops. There we go, now we're in business. There's the final grind to surround our nice chunks of ham. Okay, so I got the ground done and I got the cubes done. And uh, just before we weigh the spices out and mix them, I had the thought, I brought this out for a reason, the vegetable oil. I'm gonna pop these guys, whoop, see how spring loaded that is, back out of here. And I'm just gonna spray the container because uh, in the past when I've made these, I find they're a little bit tricky to get out. And uh, I thought maybe a little vegetable oil would help do the trick. Voila, it's ready to go again. Okay, so now I have two kilograms total here, so I'll weigh out our spices again. I need 30 grams of salt this time, 20 grams of brown sugar, all right, six grams of cure, and a gram of cure accelerator. Mix it in, all right, then you give it a really good thorough mix, like you're mixing up sausages. It's gonna get good and sticky, and then we'll put it into the mold. So I got it mixed up pretty good. Starting to stick together here. Now we're just gonna transfer it into this pan and then into the cooler with a little bit of weight on it. Now in neither, either of these batches, I didn't use any binder. I have some binder here. You could have, it's just a fail safe kind of thing to lock all those cubes together. Like I mentioned before, but I'm gonna let these cure in the refrigerator at least overnight, and you could do two to three days. That will allow those cubes to cure, and the longer meat sits in contact with one another, using this again, the longer meat sits in contact with one another, the more protein extraction occurs naturally. Putting lots of pressure on it to kind of work out the air pockets out of this pan. You could use saran wrap, or you could use a sheet. I'm gonna use some Tin foil, I'm just gonna put a layer of tin foil on so it's easy to take that pan off. I'll actually just wrap it up. We'll maybe cook these two different methods. We'll do this one in the oven and... Okay, so I got it wrapped up and then I'm just gonna put a weight on top of this one. Maybe a little jug of vinegar, or honey or oil or something like that and pop it in the cooler along with this guy here overnight. Okay, there's our two hams. I've pulled them out after the next day. I can take this honey and stuff out of the way now. And uh, we'll take these into the house. I'm gonna bake this one in the oven. I'm gonna poach this one on the stove because my regular pot is busy. I'm experimenting, smoking and poaching sausages in the background here, so into the house we go. All right, so there's our molded ham. I took the honey off and you can feel it's really nice and firm in there. So we've got some protein extraction overnight. I just popped a cookie sheet underneath it. <clears throat> so that in case it does bubble over and spill, it's not gonna make it a mess of the oven. It's gonna join some sausages that I am baking in the oven right now. I got the oven set at 185. In it goes. Okay, now in addition, I have the molded ham here, the one that's in this pressed little container. I got a, a pot of water filled up, and as you can see when I put it in, it comes just about up to the rim because our meat is gonna be just below the water level because there's that little bit of space in there for the spring. So I'm gonna fire the stove up and we're gonna bring that up to a simmer. I don't want it boiling, I kinda want it about 80 degrees Celsius or uh, 180 degrees Fahrenheit roughly. All right, so it's got that convenient little hole in the top of the mold here and I was, uh, should have been checking a little sooner. We got it above temperature a bit. That shouldn't be too bad, won't affect it too much. Uh, so we'll pop it out of there and stick it in some cooled water to get that formed ham cooling down right away. Okay, so all I've done is I just dumped the water out of that pot, run a bit of cool water right up to about the same fill point there. I'm not gonna touch it this time because it's very hot, but that'll get it cooled down real quick and then I'll stick it in the cooler. Okay, our little thermometer says that our formed ham is up to fully cooked temp. Time to pop it in the cooler. Okay, our pressed ham, pressed hams, are now cooled down, good enough for us to eat. This one, again, was baked in the oven. This one was poached in the 
in the pot and spring loaded. There we go. That's what the inside looks like. I don't know if you can see from there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, I'm just going to run this under some hot water and I hope the stainless steel expands a little bit and that little bit of canola oil we sprayed inside, I'm hoping it'll just pop out after I heat it up for a minute. So excuse me for a moment while I go do that. All right, just a minute or two in hot water. The stainless is warm. Will it come out? I feel movement. There we go. Voila, like nothing. We'll take our little stainless cap off here. And as you can see, we have nice pink cured ham cubes. So voila, there it is. The little pressed chunks of ham cubes. You can see each individual one is well bound together. It's not falling apart. And uh, they're all nice and pink and cured looking. And if the slicer was dirty, I'd throw this on the slicer, but we'll just get some hand cut pieces here for a little cross section and taste test. All right, just a nice big stroke. Oh, it's very dense. Wow, looks good. And I'll show you, I'll just do a little piece as if we're making a sandwich. I should have some sourdough, a little bit of mayonnaise, some fresh lettuce and tomatoes with a shot of mustard. That'd be good for a sandwich. But there we go. There's a chunk of formed ham, a little skinny piece in there, nice and well bound together. Comes apart a little bit if you tug it good enough, but overall that looks pretty darned good. Now let's see how it tastes. I'm guessing our next one's gonna be even better bound because all those little spaces between the chunks of ham would be filled with that. I can't remember if we had a garlic sausage now or what, but here we go. Taste test on this. Yum. Very yummy. Tastes just like ham, or less the smoke. I like a little smoke on my ham, but that'd be wicked in a sandwich, let me tell ya. Mm. One more little bite and I will, we will start to dive into this press one. Excited to see how it looks. Finished in the oven. Okay, we'll unwrap this together here. Get rid of this greasy tin foil. And we'll do that again. Wham, there's our little ham log. And I feel like this one's kind of shrunk down a bit, so it shouldn't be too hard to get it out of the mold, AKA the baking cake sheet that I got for uh, two bucks. Give her a couple pushes. Oh, maybe not, maybe I lied. Ah, come on out of there. Here we go. Just knife down the side here. A little bit of jelly at the back. You gonna come out now? Okay, there we go. There's a little ham jelly for you. Now, if you had phosphates added to this, this would have been stuck to the inside of your uh, sausage mixture. Phosphates help hams and whole muscles hold water a little better. We'll just scrape that little bit of jelly. Ooh, meat jelly off of there. Looks kind of grody right now, but there's your, your chunk of spam. Formed ham log right there. Yummy. But uh, we'll get a cross section of it and I promise it'll look even better. We'll cut into the middle. And I anticipate something very delicious looking. Whoa, look at that. There's a little bit more ground than chunks of ham. Uh, I probably should have done like 80% big chunks, 20% chunks of ground pork, but nice pink cured color, looks just like ham. A nice spam loaf, but it's actually good quality, so it's going to be good. It's not gonna be a spongy, salty, sugary piece of processed yuckiness. Here we go, cheers. How? Oh yeah. Look at that bite. That was a big one. I was excited about this. And for good reason. 
It's yummy. Super tender. Chunks of ham are good in there. The coarse texture comparison. And uh, yeah, super cheap. Make yourself some delicious homemade molded ham with the minimal ingredients, minimal equipment, and it's good and delicious and healthy probably for you. So, mm, another bite. But anyways, guys, this is the base process and base recipe of molded ham. I hope you liked it. I hope you make this. This beats the heck out of the crap you get at the deli, at grocery stores. Make yourself. It's way better. It's way tastier. It's way cheaper. That's way awesome. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.